Hello, Mike. Hello, Maurice. Good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you, Mike. So good to see you too. Good. We've got. We seem to have a lot of people here today. Let me just update the list, and let me see who all are there. Uh, we've got uh, people coming in just now. We're gonna wait for a bit. Oh, okay. Uh, Guran is here. Nishant is here. Uh, good evening. Good evening, friends. Good to see you all here. Good to see you, Mahesh, Salil, Fareen, Gaurav. Fantastic. Good. Hey, Gary. Gary is also here. Hello, Gary. How are you doing? Good to see you, Gary. And Amit is here. We got friends joining in. Namaste and a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, this is so let me tell you friends this is going to be a lot of fun today because i don't know what mike has done he has he's going to show you over 100 slides and that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun i guess so uh, i just almost sorry sorry <laughs> okay good so uh, i think um, mike I'll start straight away because we've got a long way to go. Uh, this, yeah. the intention of this, the goal of this uh, webinar is to highlight the um, the species and uh, the terrain and the um, uh, you know the method how we can look at birds in south of India, in Western Ghats and Nilgiris. So Nilgiris and Western Ghats are very, very important biotopes that host variety of species of birds and animals, um, and the um, uh, the habitat varies, um, you know, as you go along, right from tea gardens to mountains to flatlands to uh, jungles that have elephants and tigers and black leopards and you know wetlands, streams. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing if you haven't been to south india yet this is one place that you must visit in your lifetime you know one of those books that i read 1000 places to visit before you die i'm telling you this is going to be one of your first hundred if you haven't done it before okay good so um let me let me let me ask you quickly if you can all hear me well, if you can just put yes in the chat, then I know that you all can hear me well. In the meantime, just to throw a few facts across, Western Ghats run for approximately 1,600, 1,600 kilometers, right from the Dangs in Gujarat until the tip of India in Tamil Nadu. You know, and uh, Western Ghats cover a minor part in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. Over 500 species of birds are found there, about 90 families out of 251 that we have. Uh, sorry, how many families do we have in India? Mike, 112 families out of two? Oh, yeah, 251. Yeah, something of that sort. So 90 families are found here. <clears throat> um, Western Ghats influence Indian monsoon weather patterns by intercepting the rain-laden monsoon winds that sweep in from the southwest during late summer. So it's a very important part of India that we need to look at. I will not take much time because, um, uh, like I said, Mike has a long way to go. Let me quickly introduce Mike to you. So Mike Prince, um, ever since his childhood birding in England, um, Mike has been fascinated with watching birds and recording and documenting bird sightings. Mike lived in Delhi in the early 2000s. Uh, you know, Mike, what date was it? Uh, when did you arrive here first, 2001? 2002, I was in Delhi. 2000, okay. And he's been a very active member of Delhi Bird Club and contributed to the Atlas of Birds of Delhi and Haryana. After he moved to Bangalore, he soon got interested in exploring seldom visited sites. 
He worked for Bird Count India to help promote Indian birding and especially high quality data recording. He's an eBird reviewer for India. His interest in birding, bird recording and migration led to a short term assignment running the BTO's bird track program, which he did secretly from India before they were able to recruit a UK based replacement. Each week, he would check the BBC weather pages to find out whether the weather had been like in Britain, so he could write an article discussing recent bird occurrences. So this was about Mike. I'll quickly introduce myself also. I am Mohit Agarwal. I'm blessed with four children, a son and a daughter, two non-humans. One is a Labrador, and one is an escapee African Grey. I'm a follower of Shiva. Professionally, I'm an experiential ecotourism specialist with deep love for nature. I help people travel to some wonderful places in Asia. I'm the founder of Asian Adventures, a 26-year-old com travel company. It is the largest and number one bird watching tour company in India. The company is on a large mission to help Asian elephants with the corridors, free the Himalayas of plastic waste, and help small wildlife NGOs, and also save the ancient Himalayan shrines. And that was my introduction, and that was Mike's introduction. So over to you, Mike. <coughs> Thank you very much. Now, you, now you're ready to show your magic. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. See if we can start a few pictures, because as you said, we've got a few to get through. Um, hopefully, everybody should be able to see that. OK. Um, which is a bird, actually, I'm not going to mention again in this presentation, but a Malabar trogon, just one of uh, rather like last week's presentation in the Himalayas, I did lots of colourful birds, and I'm doing the same again today, um, because uh, no apologies for that. There are some pretty amazing birds um, here in South India. Yeah. Um, OK, so this is, um, as Moit mentioned, we're talking about South India. Now, just to put it a little bit into context, we're mostly talking about the Western Ghats in South India, which is the forest range that runs down the western side. Um, so this map, I have um, shamelessly pinched this map from a very recent uh, book, so I better give them a plug. This is from a photographic field guide, The Wildlife of South India, by two very well-known naturalists, um, Surya Ramachandran and David Raju. Um, and if you're doing a trip in this area, you should definitely get hold of their book. It covers all the birds, all the mammals, lots of insects, frogs. Um, it's, it's excellent. Anyway, um, just to show you in context, what well, mostly what we're talking about here will be the southern western guts. Um, which tends to have a little bit more diversity um, further south. So that's in particular parts of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Um, I'll touch on some other bits, especially Goa, uh, which is fantastic. And I was um, birding there just a few weeks back. Um, uh, but what we'll do is take you on a um, whistle stop tour uh, of some of the main spots that we would tend to visit on a tour of South India, uh, typically starting from Bangalore, which is where I'm based, which is a convenient starting point from this. Um, so uh, very briefly, Western Ghats, which we're talking about in south southwest India, um, as Mohit mentioned, um, it's a very biodiverse area. Um, it's actually older geologically than the Himalayas um, and is almost contiguous, the hill range that runs down from Gujarat to um, southern Kerala. Uh, the main break in that is a place we'll talk about a little bit later, which is called the, the Palgat Gap. It's just about a 30 kilometer gap where the plains cut through the hills. Um, and it's made a lot of difference to um, uh, how birds have evolved. So we tend to get some different species north of the gap and south of the gap that have evolved differently. Um, so we'll be uh, taking a little tour where we'll cross the gap um, uh, shortly. Um, so worldwide, um, the Western Ghats are extremely important. One of the top biodiversity sites in the world, very many endemics. Um, and if we got on this trip, we'll do, we're mostly talking about birds, we'll touch on a few mammals. Um, we could touch on amphibians, um, um, some of the fantastic other wildlife uh, there is in the Western Ghats, an incredibly diverse place, uh, but we'll, we'll leave those for another time. But yes, yeah, so there's about 40 endemic species here. So if you're birding in India, um, you do the trips in the north and the Himalayas like we talked about, um, some fantastic birding, very diverse, large um, number of species, um, but most of the endemics are here in the southwest, some of which shared with Sri Lanka as well. So that's a typical Western Ghats landscape. 
Um, unfortunately, that's a fairly modern landscape. You see the front half of that is all tea plantations. Um, and it must have been an incredible uh, place to have been 100 or more than that now, 150 years ago before these tea plantations existed. Um, so you think, unfortunately, tea has been very destructive um, and the forests have had to be cleared for the tea plantations that are such a familiar um, part of much of the most Western guts and not particularly great for birds, although there's a few specialists that do live in tea. In the back of that picture, you can see what we really like in the Western Ghats. The, this is the Shola landscape, um, the high altitude forests, like evergreen forests and grasslands, montane grasslands. Um, and this is really beautiful habitat of the Western Ghats and lots of specialities. So very quickly, we're starting up in the north, um, uh, near Bangalore, which is just off this map. Uh, and we'll run down through Karnataka, uh, through Tamil Nadu and into Kerala. So where we often start when we leave Bangalore before we actually reach the Western Ghats is um, a place called Ramnagara, where we have a vulture sanctuary. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm sure you're all aware of the story of vultures. Um, we have a few clinging on in Karnataka. So Ramnagara is a very good place for Indian vulture. Um, we hope they're, it's well protected now, but uh, they don't breed every year. Um, so um, they're still very precarious, um, but that's the best place nearby to see Indian vulture and a nice stop along the way. Um, and um, there's some other key species there that you get before you're gonna get into Western Guts. The landscape is quite different. So the birds are quite different. This is the sort of landscape. Now this is near Ramnagaram. Um, these rocky hills, these gra granite hills, um, scrubby hillsides are quite common, sort of west of Bangalore, running north up into Andhra Pradesh. Um, and it's a superb habitat for something like yellow-throated bulbul, which is a bird that's not very easy to see when you do the, the main sites on a tour. Uh, and some of you may recognize this landscape, particularly around Nagaram, for those um, uh, Hindi movie buffs amongst you because this is where Sholay, the very famous film Sholay, was filmed. And then we have some Indian vultures from Ramnagaram. And the yellow-throated bulbul, which I mentioned, which is uh, another key bird um, uh, that we can see there. And actually quite widespread, but these aren't areas that particularly people go to birding very much. Painted spur fowl are one of the lovely endemics um, of these rocky habitats. Mm -hmm. And so we continue on. We're heading south towards the old um, city of Mysore. Um, and many of you will have been to Ranganati Two Bird Sanctuary, um, which is a lovely little site on the Kaveri River um, and full of lots of small islets in the river. Um, and you can take a boat around here. Um, to see particularly large colonies of herons, ibis, and cormorants that you can get really close to, um, and a few other uh, more specialist birds here. Both lesser and grey-headed fish eagles have actually been seen in this area. Um, Spot-bellied pelicans, um, which is the, the only pelican we get in South India. Uh, great thick knee here. And actually one of the spectacular sites, the streak-throated swallows, nesting in huge colonies um, all together on some of the rocks here. So this is a fun, a fun thing to do uh, to start off a trip in the south of India. Um, here are some spoonbills and painted storks on one of the little islets um, in the Ranganati too, uh, which you see from the boat. You can just go around in a little boat like this, um, being a little bit careful not to dangle your hand over the side because it's also an excellent site for crocodiles, um, the mugger crocodile um, that we get um, in some of these parts of, of south of, of India generally. Yeah, it's a spot billed pelican, slightly smaller than the uh, pelicans from the north, the great white pelican and Dalmatian pelican. Great thick knees, um, that otherwise in India seen in places like the Chumbal in North India. And here's some of the streak throated swallows here, a few gathering mud um, from the riverside. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the nesting cormorant colonies. In the, these are actually Indian cormorants. I don't know how clearly you could see, but a long, thin bill on these. 
But this is also a good place to start seeing some of the familiar um, endemics, Southwest India. So white cheek barbet, which replaces the brown headed barbet in many places. Brown headed, you might be familiar with from the north. Um, white cheek barbet is a Western Ghats bird, but it's sort of spread out. So we have it commonly in Bangalore, for example. We're not part of the Western Ghats here. Um, Indian paradise flycatchers are fairly common in a lot of areas around here, both white um, long tailed ones like this, as well as rufous ones, two different morphs of them. Okay, and then continuing, so we're now gone south of Mysore, uh, we're in Karnataka still, uh, and Nagahole National Park, which is a famous national park um, in this part of the world, uh, in particular around the Kabini River in Nagahole. Uh, which is famous for one of the largest congregations of Asian elephants in the world. It's a, an actually man-made reservoir, but particularly in the dry season when um, the water levels drop, um, animals, and especially elephants, come down to the water um, in the afternoons to drink. And it can attract about um, sometimes up to 200 Asian elephants, um, a real spectacular sight. Um, brilliant birding as well. This is all now, this is still lowland forest. Um, but a lot of um, southwestern endemics um, and specialists are here. So blue winged parakeets, right? crimson backed sunbird, the small sunbird, which is common for a lot of the western guts. So here you can do a um, uh, jeep safaris through the through the teak forest. You can also do a boat ride. This is a coracle, the round um, traditional round boats, um, and this is on the Cabini Reservoir. And the elephants coming down to the water. And again, crocodiles in it, so keep your hands inside. And it's some of the elephants that come down to the to the river. Uh, you can see tiger sometimes in the afternoon coming down here as well, because a lot of the deer congregate here. So it is a, a great place to be. And some of the birds, so these but these are some species that actually you find throughout a lot of the Western Ghats, but blue-winged parakeet, uh, Malabar parakeet, which is one of the endemics. Pitters are actually found in quite a lot of this area in the winter. They breed further north in India, um, but tend to winter through a lot of South India. Not that easy to find in the winter, uh, much easier in the summer when they're calling um, very early in the morning, but, but you usually find them somewhere on a trip in South India. Malabar Pied Hornbill, um, quite an interesting bird because I, I mentioned that the southern Western Ghats tend to attract a lot of the um, a bit more diversity. This is one bird that actually isn't very common in the southern Western Ghats. Um, you may see it in Nagahole here, but it's actually very common in places like Goa. So if you go to Goa, the whole day Malabar Port Hornbill is common. North Karnataka in places, but actually through Kerala, Tamil Nadu and southern Karnataka, it's quite a tricky bird to find. Malabar starlings uh, or blithe starling with a bright white head. She used to be thought as a subspecies of chestnut tailed starling, and is very similar, especially females. Uh, but Malabar starling is resident in the Western Ghats. Chestnut tailed starling in this part of the country is a winter visitor. Malabar barbet. So you might already be getting a, a, a bit of a theme developing here. We've got a lot of birds called Malabar something, um, which are endemics. Um, Malabar barbet is very similar to good test of uh, your. Um, ability to identify birds by call to tell the difference between this and coppersmith, which is very similar and occur in the same places in, in some parts. And of course, Nagahole has a, has a very good population of tigers. There's a reasonably good chance um, if you stay for a few days in Nagahole or Bandipur, which is a um, contiguous uh, national park. Well, one thing at the moment uh, that part of Nagahole is quite well known for is um, black panther, um, which is actually a melanistic leopard. Um, and this has been seen fairly regularly in the last couple of years in part of Nagahole. Um, it's interesting that this one is, is very black, but um, they, they are, if you look at this one, which is not, they are just dark versions of a regular leopard. Okay, this is a, a black and white image, but you can see this is actually quite a pale black panther. Continuing on, we go a bit further south. 
So Mudamalai is all really contiguous. So Nagahole, uh, Bandipur, Mudamalai National Parks, uh, Wainad in Kerala is really one very large contiguous forest. Mudamalai is on the Tamil Nadu side now. Again, excellent for elephants, um, uh, very good for leopard as well, but also extremely good birding in parts, um, particularly some of the drier areas um, around. So Masinagudi is an area of Mudamalai um, that can be excellent for, for several birds. This is the landscapes. So you see, this is where an area where there's still quite a lot of dry areas, so more rocky open areas um, before you reach the large hills. So you're still in lowland area at the moment, but um, super forest. Uh, elephants are quite common. Leopards, not so common, but um, still um, uh, seen reasonably often. And gore, we start to get in some of these forests. Now, gore is quite interesting. The Indian bison, although it's, it's not a bison, it's a cow. It's the um, uh, largest cow in the world. Um, and actually, these you get up in the higher areas, the Western Ghats as well. So even in the tea plantations. Um, and one of the one of the problems that it happens quite a few cases in the Western Ghats is um, that humans and wildlife are in very, very close um, proximity. So gore will roam around in the tea plantations. Uh, elephants we talked about um, are, can be a big problem with the booming population there. So there's quite a lot of um, interesting conservation initiatives going on. Um, some of you may have heard a little bit if you were on Vivek Menon's talk a few days ago. Um, but there's a lot of work from NGOs such as A Tree and Nature Conservation Foundation working with local populations to ensure that people can survive uh, in harmony with wildlife there. So some of the things are, think, for example, projects to give early warnings of elephants um, um, in tea plantations. Um, a little bit more. One of the star birds of Messina Goody, spot-bellied eagle owl um, or forest eagle owl, a fantastic bird. This has been um, a lot of people have been lucky in the last year or two because a nest was found very close to Messina Goody. So lots of people saw um, young spot-bellied eagle owls reasonably often found in the daytime as well but a real spectacular large owl and the agree flower pecker going down to almost a complete extreme in size one of the smallest birds in india um, this was split from plain flower pecker which you get in the north um, so it is a, a western guts endemic now Blacknecked monarch is a stunning bird that's found throughout a lot of the Western Ghats. And vernal hanging parrot. Um, interestingly, not hanging here, but you'll very frequently see them hanging. Um, so they'll hang vertically down. Um, and um, it's also a very common sound screeching across the, the forest. So you hear them very often go through. Um, but very interesting, something I didn't realize until um, last month when I was in Goa um, for a week or two. Uh, in the Western Ghats in Goa, um, um, I found a um, vernal hanging parrot roosting. Um, so roosting in a, in a tree at night. And interesting, they actually roost by hanging. So they hang upside down, uh, rather like bats, but uh, that's actually how they roost. So Messina Goody is also quite a dry, scrubby area. So it's a good place to pick up some birds that you don't tend to find elsewhere when you get into more of the forest um, areas of the Western Ghats and when you get into the higher altitude areas. So Malabar Lark, uh, very much like Crested Lark in the north, can be found around Messina Goody. Also places uh, to find things like Jordan's Bush Lark, which is actually quite common in South India, but again is in the drier areas. And white-bellied minivet is a, is a star of this area, um, a bird of lowland sort of thorn scrub, quite reliably found around the scene of Goody, but very difficult to find elsewhere in, in South India. So not very far from Munamalaya and Messina Goody, um, but a completely different landscape is Uti. So Uti is up at an altitude of about 2,000 meters. So it's only about an hour or so's drive from Messina Goody, but most of that is up uh, a famous Ghats road, so a very winding road with 
I forget how many hairpins it is, it's something like 38 or 39 hairpin bends. Um, but um, Uti is well known, very historical place for lots of um, uh, British architecture, um, but it's also a brilliant birding place. And so now we start to get maybe less variety of birds, but some other specialities. Um, so we'll talk about Nilgiri Blue Robin, I'll come on to that in a bit, Nilgiri Wood Pigeon, uh, Black and Orange Flycatcher, and Kashmir Flycatcher, some of these real, real stunning birds. And now we're into an area where instead of calling everything Malabar something, we start to call them Nilgiri something, because this is the, the Nilgiri Hills in uh, this part um, of the Western Ghats. So again, a mixed landscape similar to before, a lot of um, tea plantations, uh, quite a few lakes around in this area, and then the hills themselves. And one of the tea estates in Uti. Um, and the toy train. Um, you can do a ride on the toy train if you like. This still runs um, and it goes through some spectacular forest very slowly, so you don't make a lot of progress. But it's a brilliant experience to go on the on the toy train that you can take um, from Uti going down or to Konor and then down to near Coimbatore if you want to do it um, for its full full journey. Also, some of the um, one of the places we stay in is the Fernhill Palace. Um, uh, give you a real taste of the Raj, and I try to imagine what my ancestors were enjoying all this time when they were sitting on the lawns drinking gin and tonic and playing croquet. Uh, but a, a very interesting place. Indeed. But anyway, enough of that. We didn't come to Uti for that. We came for some birds. Black and orange flycatcher really is a stunning bird. Um, it can be a little bit of a skulking flycatcher, so sometimes you have to work a little bit hard to find them, and they like staying in the undergrowth a little bit. Um, but then they will pop out and show themselves. This is a brilliant male. Uh, really, not many birds like that in the world. And another key bird around Uti is Kashmir flycatcher. Um, a little bit like a red-breasted flycatcher, but much more extensive red on the breast and a sort of black uh, moustache like. Kashmir flycatcher breeds as you'd expect in Kashmir, mostly. Um, fairly restricted range and then wintering uh, in the Western Ghats, in Sri Lanka as well, um, but in very, very few places. So it really is some places around Uti quite difficult to find, but there are usually a few around um, and then very faithful to a small area. So um, uh, in the sort of November time, hopefully we end up finding where they're wintering um, and then they usually stay put in the same sort of garden area um, for a few months. And of course, there has to be a Nilgiri flycatcher. Uh, fairly widespread in these hills, uh, but not always easy to see. No. Bit like a dark version of a Verdita flycatcher. Mm. Nilgiri wood pigeon, um, another bird that's um, a little bit widespread in these parts, but never that easy to see. Mm. And Nilgiri shulakili, uh, which some of you may know more as Nilgiri Blue Robin, and some of you may know as a short wing. Um, it's gone through various changes as people have tried to work out what this bird actually is. Um, so it started off as a short wing until it was realized it's really not related to the short wings of the Himalayas, the Eastern Himalayas. Um, and then for a long time was known as a Blue Robin, um, but actually it's not really that close to the other Blue Robins either. Um, and so a local name has been adopted um, for Shuliki. Um And this is one of the key endemics to see. This is Nilgiri Shulikili. Um, but we actually have another species, very similar, um, white-bellied uh, Shulikili, uh, which looks very much like this, but doesn't have the orange underneath. And that's a bird that is south of the Palgat Cup. So I mentioned that um, uh, these birds have clearly evolved, they're, they're resident birds, they don't move very far. So um, on hills on one side of the gut, it's evolved into the, the Nilgiri Shulikili, and hills on the other side of the gut, um, it's a white-bellied Shulikili. The same thing has happened with some of the laughing thrushes, 
um, uh, get on to them in a little bit. Um, but actually, a lot of the work that's been done by some researchers on these habitats in South India, um, these uh, sky islands is a term that's been used to, for these isolated hillsides where um, things have evolved quite separately, um, not traveling very far. Um, there is actually likely to be a third Sholikili in the far south of Kerala, um, where there's also um, uh, another um, laughing thrush uh, all evolved separately. So moving down slightly, so we came up to Uti, um, hopefully saw our black and orange flycatchers and our Kashmir flycatchers, and then um, we come down the other side of Coimbatore, uh, the other side of the Palagat Cup to Valparai, which is in Tamil Nadu. Uh, Uti was also in Tamil Nadu. Uh, um, it's part of the Animalized Tiger Reserve. Um, and again, nice extensive area of forest, a lot of good Western Ghats birds. So similar um, areas of um, tea, um, a lot of this area um, has had some projects put in to restore the rainforests from, from areas that have been degraded um, in the past. So there's a lot of um, plantation of, for natural trees here, a lot of rainforest restoration being done by some of the NGOs here. And one of the things that Valparais is very famous for is the lion-tailed macaque. Um, and endemic again to the Western Ghats. There's a few other places further north that it's seen, uh, but Valparais is by far the best place to see it. Um, and in fact, Valparais town itself, so these birds have got quite used to, <laughs> these birds, these mammals, have got quite used to um, humans. Um, unfortunately, they'll feed around um, garbage as well a bit. Um, but, um, uh, and unfortunately, because they're around the town, they've suffered quite a bit with things like uh, road kills, and that's the, an endangered uh, mammal. But um, there's a lot of awareness um, done with local people here. You'll find lots of signboards talking about lion tailed macaques in um, local language when you drive around here. And they go around in, in troops, so uh, sometimes you can struggle to find them because they're all together in one troop uh, somewhere, and then with a bit of luck, you'll come across maybe, uh, maybe even a hundred macaques together in a troop. Here's one of the laughing thrushes I talked about. So Palani laughing thrush, is the one that's found in this area. The Palani Hills um, is part of the area slightly further east from here. Now the, these laughing thrushes as well have got a, a local name. So these are also known these days as chilapans. So this is a Palani chilapan. We didn't um, show it here, but um, around Uti, you have the uh, Nilgari um, chilapan as well which is, uh, again, very similar. There's actually four species of these throughout the Western Ghats. One in the far south, the Ashambu uh, Jalopan, and one not too far from here in parts of um, Kerala, in Wynard, for example, the Banasura laughing thrush, which are very restricted and quite difficult to see. Painted bush quail is one bird that likes the tea plantations. This is one bird you can often find in, in the tea um, and is a, a really spectacular quail. Um, heard a lot, not that easy to see necessarily. Um, but again, um, uh, it's a Western Ghats endemic, although historically there are records from central India, uh, areas in, in Madhya Pradesh, but I I don't know when the last record was. I think it's um, 100 years or more um, specimen records. So it's unknown whether there's a population that still survives in central India. Malabar grey hornbills are a familiar sound um, and sight in quite a lot of Western Ghats. And then not too far from Valparai, there's another area known as Top Slip. Um, part of the Animalize or Indira Gandhi National Park. Um, again, uh, quite a similar bird selection, um, uh, excellent place to visit. It's also um, used to be well known for Sri Lanka Bay Owl and Sri Lanka Frogmouth. Um, unfortunately, they're a bit difficult to see because unless you're actually staying inside, you have permission to stay inside, you can't um, stay after dark in some of these areas. Why not Laughing Thrush is a, is a bird that um, is particularly good in the top slip area as well.
so that some of the um, open areas inside the forest attract large numbers of deer and elephants in this case. Uh, Indian giant squirrels, um, it is actually Indian, it's the same species you get elsewhere in India as well, but uh, also we tend to call it Malabar giant squirrel a little bit more. They're quite a familiar um, sight and sound through a lot of the Western Guts. Asian fairy bluebird is a stunning bird, again found throughout this area. And flame-throated bulbul, um, this is actually um, not a common bird, it's found, it's widespread in the Western Guts, it's no, nowhere particularly common, uh, but it's um, uh, quite um, reliable in parts of Goa, where actually this is the state bird of Goa. Uh, the greater racket-tailed drongo is another familiar sound um, in a lot of the, the Guts. So then if you leave um, Tamil Nadu uh, and you reach Kerala for the first time, you close to the border, you get to Chinar Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, which is quite unusual in Kerala because most of Kerala is well forested, it's, it's wet, evergreen forest much more. Chinar is a, is a dry area. Uh, it gets a few birds that aren't really found elsewhere in Kerala or elsewhere on our travels around the Western Ghats forests. Um, spot believe eagle owl um, is found here fairly reliably, but also the birds like such as grey bellied cuckoo, yellow throated bulbuls again, uh, Jürgen's bushlark, and some of these birds that like the drier areas. There's a river running through which probably has brown fish owl and spot bellied eagle owl in some of these trees. Jinara is also um, very well known for another giant squirrel, the grizzled giant squirrel, a uh, very restricted range um, only in South India. Um, Chinar is the best place to see it, it's also the uh, Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary, so not far from Ramnagaram when we started on this little tour, where the vultures are in Karnataka, uh, is another good place for the grizzled giant squirrel. And occasionally they're found together as well in some places. Doomfaced Malkoa is a dry scrub bird, so quite difficult to see in not a lot of Western Guts, but Chinar is one of these areas which is quite good for it. And then from Chinar, you go back up into the hills again to Munar, um, which many of you will know. It's quite popular as a general tourist attraction, at the heart of the tea country in Kerala. Um, and around Munar is the highest point in the Western Ghats, at about 2,600, 2,700 meters. Um, and again, um, some of the birds we've seen elsewhere, black and orange flycatcher, um, the Palani laughing thrush. Here we have um, the white-bellied Blue Robin, um, the Shola Kili, and Nilgari Thrush and Nilgari Pipit um, are two of the key endemics in this area. Here's some of the tea plantations around the Munar. But the real habitat is this. This is Araviculum National Park, which is a stunning high altitude Shola um, grass environment. Um, and has some excellent birding for the high altitude Western Guts birding um, and also mammaling. It's um, the best place to see Nilgari tar. Um, and in fact, um, the Nilgari tar is a protected area, so the actual park um, closes for um, a month or so in um, late January, uh, February, uh, when it's tar breeding season. Um, so if you're, if you're coming to go birding here, um, you need to make sure you come before that because otherwise it makes Nilgari pipits a little bit difficult to find and Nilgari thrushes a little bit tougher to find. Now, a particularly rare mammal that's very restricted here is an endemic in this area, is Nilgari martin. Um, very rarely seen. Uh, I've not seen it, although on my last trip we went to an area that um, uh, is quite good for them. We'd find some fresh scat from Nilbury Martins, but not too many people have seen it. But uh, it's a chance of finding Nilbury Martin in the, in the area around Monar. Indian scimitar babbler is actually fairly easily seen around here. You've, if you hear it a lot through the Western Huts, not always that easy to see. Southern hill miners. Um, 
again, fairly widespread. And the Ogre Pipit, which is one of the stars here. So Eriviculum National Park, um, which is a, it's a popular tourist attraction, so it gets quite busy, but you can usually find the Ogre Pipits there feeding just a few meters away from the path, quite um, unobtrusively and, and quite unbothered by, um, uh, by the tourists around. Okay, now I've um, I've been very colourful in this uh, presentation so far, and um, in last week's one as well. Um, but it's not just colourful birds. The Western Ghats supports um, excellent populations of wintering birds, uh, wintering migrants. Um, greenish warbler is one of the common ones. Green warbler is also one of the common ones, um, and we're always on the lookout for them. Green and greenish warbler. And I show you a little bit here if this. Uh, if this gif would animate, which it doesn't seem to want to, um, unfortunately. Um, okay, I was hoping to be able to show you um, uh, greenish warbler migration, um, but then we don't seem to be moving. Um, but um, uh, what this one is, this map is showing, this is produced um, from eBird. Um, so this is um, done by Bird Count India. I've done lots of studies on migration of, of plenty of birds that um, use India and shows it how important India is, and in this case, the Western Guts. So greenish warbler, which is the bird on the left, and green warbler, which is the bird on the right. Um, you can see that um, in this image, the green warbler, if you look at all those green dots in the middle of the map, um, breeds in sort of eastern Turkey, Georgia, the Caucasus, that sort of area. But the entire population comes down to southwest India, the Western Guts, um, to winter. Um, and greenish warbler, which is much more widespread, um, it would be breeding throughout uh, um, Scandinavia, across um, Siberia. Um, greenish warbler, again, almost all greenish warblers winter in India. Uh, more widespread than green. But, uh, apologies for the map not moving. We'll be able to see how they leave India um, in the spring and will return in the autumn. But whilst we're still on, like, uh, some of the more subtle, um, not so interesting to look at birds for, for many of us, um, but the highlights for some of us. We're also looking for things such as Titler's leaf warbler, fairly similar to a greenish warbler. In this one, sorry, a nice long dark bill, which is one of the features. So Titler's leaf warbler is a scarce wintering bird in the Western Guts, um, and uh, one of the key birds we do look out for. It um, breeds in the Western Himalayas, um, but again, it's not a very wide range and not um, so easily seen. So from Munar, um, Periyar is um, a fantastic reserve a bit further south. Periyar National Park is a tiger reserve. Um, don't too often come across tigers, which is actually a good thing because um, they allow you to do um, plenty of walking trails in Periyar. So obviously as a bird watcher in India, um, some of the national parks are just fantastic places, but sometimes a little bit frustrating that you're restricted to just going around by Jeep uh, for very valid reasons when you've got elephants and tigers roaming around. Um, but Periyar um, allows you to do some trails with uh, forest guards where you can walk through the fantastic, fantastic forest there. Um, and you can walk out, walk for hours um, through this area. Again, brilliant birding, super variety of Western Guards birds. Um, why not laughing thrush? This is probably the best place to see it. Um, white belly blue fly catches, frog mouths here. Um, super place. So it's Peria it surrounds a big lake. Um, water level was very low in this picture. Um, and again, a little bit like Cabini is um, great for attracting elephants to come around to the lake. Um, and you can do a boat um, across the lake, watch some of the wildlife coming down. The last time I was there doing an afternoon boat ride, we had a family of wild dogs come down to the edge of the water. Mm -hmm. Yet more elephants. Nildri Lungo, you can find in a few places. We were normally on a trip, we would have seen it in a few places by now. And some of the birds here. So Malabar woodshrike um, is, a, is, is again widespread, but not necessarily very easy to see. Used to be um, uh, joined as one species with um, large woodshrike um, in the north of India and the Himalayas and places, but is, is split as a, 
uh, as a separate species and is a Western Ghats endemic. White-bellied woodpecker, stunning large woodpecker. Um, Periyar, a particularly good place to see white-bellied woodpecker. In fact, it's a good place for woodpeckers um, uh, overall. Um, so the last time that I was there, which was one, one year ago, um, when we were doing a trip through Periyar and we had a whole morning walking through the forest, um, we actually had one tree uh, where just low down near the ground in the first sort of three meters of the of the trunk going up, uh, we had um, a greater flame back, two black rump flame backs, and a common flame back, uh, all on the same tree together. White belly tree pie um, is a, a lovely endemic, um, where again periar is, is definitely the best place to see them. white bellied blue flycatcher, um, a stunning endemic. This one occurs more widely, um, certainly find it fairly easily in Goa as well, but um, uh, was the top target bird for us. And the Wynard laughing thrush. Um, Wynard laughing thrush actually has quite a wide distribution in the Western Ghats, but it's very difficult to see. Um, so I have a slight confession to make in that I've tried to see it in various places in Goa, in North Karnataka, in Periyar before um, and have always failed. And then on this trip last year, um, we went to a particular uh, river where there's sort of bamboo clumps along the river, which is a, a really good habitat for why not laughing thrush. And we were spending some time in this area. And then one of my guests um, managed to see one, you know, popped out very nicely. Um, called me and just as I got there I saw a tail disappearing into the undergrowth and that's all I managed. So unfortunately I take her word for it that it was a wayne laughing thrush but I'm still yet to see a whole one. And then to Thatakad. So Thatakad is very famous amongst bird watchers. It's not that far from Kochi in Kerala. Uh, we're now in some lowland forest here, um, and one brilliant thing about Atikad is the variety of birds here. Uh, it probably is the most diverse place. Um, it also um, has quite a few good local guides in the area, so it's a brilliant place to end your trip, uh, because if there is anything you haven't seen that well, or you haven't seen at all, um, you can try and uh, find it around Atikad. Um, but in particular, there are a few birds in Natakad that is, is famous for. Um, Sri Lanka bay owl is one of them. Frogmouths, again, black barzers, all birds that are um, uh, difficult to find elsewhere and best seen at Natakad. Mm -hmm. So Natakad is along the Periyar River. Uh, it's about three or four hours from Periyar itself. And they're um, both hiding in the trees there at their daytime roosts are two of the real key birds. Um, as their names would suggest, these are um, endemics shared with Sri Lanka. So they're found in the Western Ghats in India and in Sri Lanka, um, both nocturnal um, and both use daytime roosts, which if you're lucky enough, uh, you managed to come across them. Um, we saw both of these on our last trip, but uh, the, the bay owl in particular um, is a, a difficult bird to find. Um, and uh, definitely the highlight of our trip last, last year. Black barza is also present there. It's a super raptor. Um, difficult to see in India. It's a migrant. Um, so it occasionally turns up in, in strange places. It's turned up in, in Bangalore in places sometimes on migration. Um, but um, Thatikad is one of the more reliable places to see it. The, the lovely heart spotted woodpecker. Um, and you can just about see here two, two nice defined black hearts on the wing. Um, small woodpecker, very unusual shape. It also looks like it has really big shoulders and a, a scrawny thin neck. Um, um, again, it's a sound through quite a lot of the Western Ghats, up through to Goa, certainly into Maharashtra as well, um, but not easy to see in most places. Malabar whistling thrush, we will have heard a number of times on the trip. Um, 
who have not necessarily seen it. Um, they're like some of the dark river streams and not always easy to see, but sometimes can be incredibly confiding. Little spider hunter, a stunning, stunning small bird. Often, often find these on banana plants, they're like banana flowers. Uh, and there's a few small seed eaters. This is one we look for around, uh, not so easy to find. Black throated moonia, which is again an endemic. Um, so, South India um, is a, it's a, a brilliant area for birds, as hopefully we've seen. Lots of colourful birds, lots of endemics, um, but um, there's also a bit more to it than that. It's, it's, if you've been to North India before, you find that it, so much is incredibly different um, in terms of culture, in terms of birds, in terms of food. Um, and it's a brilliant experience. So trekking around Munar, you know, trek through one of the tea plantations. Uh, spice gardens, so you can visit, in fact, they can, can be quite good for birds as well, so they're worth visiting. Um, see um, hundreds of the different spices and also um, uh, plants used um, medicinally as well, which are grown a lot in Kerala. Um, and a little bit of culture, if you'd like to enjoy a Katakali dance um, in the evening after you've um, enjoyed seeing some good birds and you're sat down after dinner. And of course, I, I've done a really long presentation here without talking about food. Uh, food is always a big part of my trips. So South India um, in particular is fantastic for breakfasts. Um, which is a bit of a shame as a bird watcher because you want to do your breakfast in the field, but uh, we always make sure we get some, some good doses somewhere. And interesting idlis and tea, There's a lot of tea obviously in, um, in Munar and places like that. This is all part of Kerala in the, the backwaters. It's a well worth a, a relaxing stay after you've done some birding. Um, you can stay on houseboats as well, cruising the backwaters. Maybe find some of the kingfishers present in this area. Before ending up in Kochi, um, which is a really interesting place. These are the Chinese fishing nets on the beach at Kochi. Um, and what we haven't talked about here, because we now ended up in Kochi, is anything about water birds, for example. But Kochi is a great place for a lot of water birds, waders, um, and in fact, a few of the pelagics that we've done occasionally in India. Um, but with the sunset over the Arabian Sea, um, that seems a good place to end it. That was a that was a two week tour we probably did there, maybe a three week tour in less than an hour. So um, I hope you enjoyed the birds. If there's any questions, um, please do um, send them in on the chat. What a brilliant presentation, Mike. It's a bit whistles, so, but uh, there's some nice birds. You can't miss them out. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, before I thank you for everything, I want to also thank all the photographers who've contributed to um, the slideshow. And they, you know, we've used the slides with the permission and we're really, really thankful that uh, great photos would sensitize our audience and the visitors here. And um, I think I would let people ask you questions. Uh, please go ahead and type your questions that Mike can answer for you. In the meantime, I just want to tell you that my first visit to Arabiculum was in 1988 with Vivek, when I saw a pack of dholes, wild dogs, uh, killing a Nilgiri tar. And this was, uh, it wasn't easy to see Nilgiri tar then. You had to trek up to Rice's hut right inside and it would take one full day to get there to be able to see Nilgirita. On that trip, we also saw a black leopard there. So there was a very, very wet uh, time to be there, but that was, uh, that was really, really, really brilliant. Then on another occasion, we saw Nilgiri Martin in Pampadam Shola. So that's mm. one Shola that's, uh, you know, it's the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yeah, we tried we tried that on our trip last year, which we just thought well, yeah. let's have a go, try try going there. Um, and although we didn't see it, um, it was actually one of the highlights for birds. Um, and it's not a place necessarily people tend to visit too often. They'll stick with the main Arabian area, but we had a French flycat there. That's where we found our titans. It was full of large bills before those. Um, just a beautiful trek to that area. Um, 
Yeah. Right. So I'm also going to share uh, two files with you all, uh, which have, um, uh, you know, one is a, a trip report, the recent trip report one year ago that Mike did. And then there is one uh, document that sort of covers the um, all these places that we talked about, which you can download and you can keep them with you. You know, so while you post your questions and Mike can answer, I'm also sharing these two downloads with you. You go ahead and and download these files. And um, and Farin, if you can post the link in the chat for people to join our birding community so that they can keep interacting with us more as we go along. Over to, to you, Mike. I'm shutting off my mic for a bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just um, uh, just looking through to see if there was any questions there. Um, it's nice to see Yogesh here. Yogesh was with me last year on that trip, so I hope that brought back some nice memories. Um, so Ajay Kumar mentioned, yes, Valparai, a bird I didn't mention at all on this trip, of course, is great Indian hornbill, um, which is a, a stunning bird, which um, Valparai is probably the best place for them. Um, they nest there and have like, used the same nest for years and years and years. Um, top slip as well, we saw them, but, uh, but yeah, that's uh, always a highlight if you, particularly in the evenings, if you're looking over the forest and um, the great hornbills gather before roosting and then you can see these birds flying across forest clearings. Um, um, so that's a real highlight. I really should have mentioned great hornbill, shouldn't I? Um, I don't think anything else. Uh, Nishand asks about any place in Andhra area. Um, so that's an interesting one, actually, because you've got, we've talked about the Western Ghats here. Um, you have the Eastern Ghats um, that goes up um, through Andhra and into Orissa, and it's a really underbirded area, uh, very underexplored. Um, so quite a few of the Western Ghats birds, a few of them extend up um, in the spur of the Eastern Ghats a little bit. But you also get quite a lot of neat northeastern birds that come sort of down. So things like pale cat pigeon, uh, jungle fowls, or red jungle fowls come down. So you've got places where grey jungle fowl, uh, which is the Western Guts endemic, um, almost meets red jungle fowl in parts. Um, so Andra has uh, some super places in the Eastern Guts to, to explore. I don't know too much about them. Um, there's various other, it's also otherwise, it's a, a drier area typically. I can um, send you some links, uh, Nishand, after the, after the call, if you like, for other birding there. Um, so Neil says, live in Bangalore, missing all these awesome places. Yeah, I, I'm the same, I'm the same. I, I should go, I think, uh, maybe we should, we should do a trip next, in the next few weeks, Mohit, I think. Uh, you know, Nishand and I are doing a storytelling, wildlife storytelling session this Sunday. And um, uh, Farin, go ahead and post the link if people want to attend that. And then, friends, we are going to be meeting again next Thursday with uh, with Mike. And Mike, uh, would you like to talk about Rajasthan and um, you know uh, the areas of of Western India? Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's that. we we did some Himalayas um, last week. Uh, we had lots of colourful birds. We've gone down to Western Ghats for lots of colourful birds. We go to Rajasthan. It's not going to be quite colourful, though, is it? We're out in the desert, and the colours are not there, but the birding is fantastic. Uh, it's also a trip we did in November. Um, so yeah, let's um, next week have a little talk about um, uh, Rajasthan and Gujarat. Um, and more open country areas but some great wetland areas as well as desert national park uh, yeah we'll, we'll go there next week mm -hmm. yeah and we'll talk about wildlife as well and we'll talk a bit about culture as well because it's 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 an integral part of the entire thing so i think we will talk about various experiences that you and i've been through as we go along and uh, it'll be interesting you know, and so Amit says, uh, in which place of Western Ghats we can see birds? Well, this, this Amit, this is uh, this entire presentation was about Western Ghats, and Neil Giri is where you'll be able to find birds. If you'd like, you can download uh, both the documents here, and you'd be able to go through that and get all the information that you need. So we can yeah. we concentrate on some of the more popular areas, but. Um, but yeah, there's some, there's some great birding areas um, elsewhere as well. So a bit further north in northern parts of Karnataka. So places like um, Dandeli in North Karnataka um, has some lovely areas. Super place for Malabar Pied Hornbill as well as a lot of other um, forest birds. Um, Goa is super western duck birding as well. So Goa has some great forest birds. 
Flames are available at the road, but a lot of the woodpeckers are showing very nicely there in December. Um, and Zagoa has some super Western Ghats birds. Um, and also, you're then only an hour or so between the Ghats and the coast. So, um, a great mix. So, there's lots of places in Maharashtra, even from Mumbai, you've got places that are reach you. You can reach the Western Ghats, places like Karnala, um, are not too far away. And some in Gujarat, the Dangs Forest has some great birding not very often visited. Um, so there's there's plenty of plenty of good birding. Uh, yeah, all you need to do is just step out, you know. And um, South India is very very bird rich. So wherever you go, you you know you'd be able to get many species. If you're a, if you're a beginner, or if you're a, if you're a photographer, or if you're a serious birder, there are many opportunities everywhere. So mm. you'd be happy. Uh, there's a lot of Carolyn bird watching, so it's probably the, the most heavily birded place um, there is in India. Uh, it is still, for those who are doing in Europe, you know, it's still the number of bird watchers that you have in the UK or in Sweden or in places. Um, but the, the Carolyn have been fantastic local birders, uh, all regularly using eBird, so there's lots of great information uh, about birding in Kerala. Uh, yes, um, so we went a bit further south, so Periyar is a bit further south, but even right down to the south, Bandrum is, is some of these areas quite sweet and relaxed, so not so commonly visited, but that's where uh, the other, the Ashambu laughing thrush, uh, and, um, uh, will probably be a new species, um, are, um, a lot of the other groups. Uh, regular Western Ghats bird there as well. And in fact, uh, Laura, uh, that area has just had India's first ever willow warbler, uh, which is something oh. that will make very well. Uh, yes. So, um, yeah, uh, Mike, uh, Goran is asking how is birding further south of Kochi? Yeah, that's what I was just, just talking about there. So, yes, it's, it's very good, especially if you want to see a willow warbler. Uh, which, it's, for those who don't know, is probably one of the commonest birds we on seas in the summer. Excellent. So, uh, friends, if anybody has anything to ask Mike, or if you want a checklist of uh, this region or something, just reach out to us and we'd be happy to give it to you. You know, just send us an email or, or WhatsApp or just reply to these webinar um, emailers that you're getting in your inbox. Reply to any of these and then we'll be happy to give it out to you. Mike's trip report also has Mike's contact, so you can always get in touch with him. So. I see what Andrew Kumar mentioned somewhere actually for vultures, yes. Um, around the Mangalam area. So this isn't someone like too far from the goodie we were talking about. He's actually probably the best place in the South India still for vultures. So you've got uh, a number of <laughs> Did you, did you want to know more about that? Yeah. So you, you don't live that far away from me, Gitanjali, so we should just go and visit sometime. Yes. And Goran, yes, I remember you found the wood warbler at Sokar, you know, the, the biggish warbler that's there. At, so, yeah, so that was good. Great friends. So it's we passed uh, 2030. Uh, our, our webinar uh, should have ended by now. And thank you for being here. Uh, love you all. We will see you again next week, same time, 7.30, uh, with Rajasthan and Gujarat, um, you know, on a platter for you. We'll see you soon then. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for being here. Super, super. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.